Absent seizures are one of several kinds of seizures. These seizures are sometimes referred to as petty mal seizures. Absent seizures are characterized by a brief loss and return of consciousness, generally not followed by a period of lethargy. Signs and Symptoms The clinical manifestations of absent seizures vary significantly among patients. Impairment of consciousness is the essential symptom, and may be the only clinical symptom, but this can be combined with other manifestations. The hallmark of the absent seizures is abrupt and sudden onset impairment of consciousness, interruption of ongoing activities, a blank stare, possibly a brief upward rotation of the eyes. If the patient is speaking, speech is slowed or interrupted. If walking, he or she stands transfixed. If eating, the food will stop on its way to the mouth. Usually, the patient will be unresponsive when addressed. In some cases, attacks are aborted when the patient is called. The attack lasts from a few seconds to half a minute, and evaporates as rapidly as it commenced. Absent seizures generally are not followed by a period of disorientation or lethargy, in contrast to the majority of seizure disorders. Absence with impairment of consciousness only is per the above description, absence with mild clonic components. Here the onset of the attack is indistinguishable from the above, but clonic components may occur in the eyelids, at the corner of the mouth, or in other muscle groups which may vary in severity from almost imperceptible movements to generalized myoclonic jerks. Objects held in the hand may be dropped. Absence with aponic components. Here there may be a diminution in tone of muscles subserving posture as well as in the limbs leading to drooping of the head, occasionally slumping of the trunk, dropping of the arms, and relaxation of the grip. Rarely tone is sufficiently diminished to cause this person to fall. Absence with tonic components. Here during the attack tonic muscular contraction may occur, leading to increase in muscle tone which may affect the extensor muscles or the flexor muscles symmetrically or asymmetrically. If the patient is standing, the head may be drawn backward and the trunk may arch. This may lead to retropulsion. The head may tonically draw to one or another side. Absence with automatisms. Purposeful or quasi-purposeful movements occurring in the absence of awareness during an absence attack are frequent and may range from lip licking and swallowing to clothes fumbling or aimless walking. If spoken to, the patient may grunt, and when touched or tickled may rub the site. Automatisms are quite elaborate and may consist of combinations of the above described movements or may be so simple as to be missed by casual observation. Absence with autonomic components. These may be pallor, and less frequently flushing, sweating, dilatation of pupils and incontinence of urine. Mixed forms of absence frequently occur. These seizures can happen a few times a day or in some cases hundreds of times a day, to the point that the person cannot concentrate in school or in other situations requiring sustained, concentrated attention. Precipitating factors, typical absences are easily induced by hyperventilation in more than 90% of the patients. This is a reliable test for the diagnosis of absence seizures, a patient suspected of typical absences should be asked to overbreathe for three a min, counting his or her breaths. Intermittent photic stimulation may precipitate or facilitate absence seizures. Eyelid myoclonia is a common clinical feature. A specific mechanism difference exists in absence seizures in that T-type CAR++ channels are believed to be involved. Ethosuamide is specific for these channels and thus it is not effective for treating other types of seizure. Volproic acid and gabapentin have multiple mechanisms of action including blockade of T-type CAR++ channels and are useful in treating multiple seizure types. Diagnosis The only diagnostic test for absence seizures is EEG. However, brain scans such as by an MRI can help rule out other diseases, such as a stroke or a brain tumor. During electroencephalography, hyperventilation can be used to provoke these seizures. Ambulatory EEG monitoring over 24 hours can quantify the number of seizures per day and they are most likely times of occurrence. Absence seizures are brief, generalized epileptic seizures of sudden onset and termination. When someone experiences an absence seizure they are often unaware of their episode. 
those most susceptible to this are children and the first episode usually occurs between 4 a year or 12 years old. It is very rare that someone older will experience their first absence seizure. Episodes of absence seizures can often be mistaken for inattentiveness when misdiagnosed and can occur 50 to 100 times a day. They can be so difficult to detect that some people may go months or years before given a proper diagnosis. There are no known before or after effects of absence seizures. They have two essential components, clinically, the impairment of consciousness, electroencephalography shows generalized spike and slow wave discharges. Absence seizures are broadly divided into typical and atypical types. Typical absence seizures usually occur in the context of idiopathic generalized epilepsis and EEG shows fast greater than 2.5 Hz generalized spike wave discharges. The prefix a euro or atypical a euro is to differentiate them from atypical absences rather than to characterize them as classical or characteristic of any particular syndrome. Atypical absence seizures occur only in the context of mainly severe symptomatic or cryptogenic epilepsies of children with learning difficulties who also suffer from frequent seizures of other types, such as atonic, tonic and myoclonic. Onset and termination is not so abrupt and changes in tone are more pronounced. Ictal EEG is of slow spike and slow wave. The discharge is heterogeneous, often asymmetrical and may include irregular spike and slow wave complexes, fast and other paroxysmal activity. Background interictal EEG is usually abnormal. Syndromes, these are childhood absence epilepsy, epilepsy with myoclonic absences and juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Other proposed syndromes are Jevons syndrome and genetic generalized epilepsy with phantom absences. These types of seizures are also known to occur to patients suffering with porphyria and can be triggered by stress or other porphyrin-inducing factors. Treatment Treatment of patients with absent seizures only is mainly with sodium valproate or ethosuamide, which are of equal efficacy controlling absences in around 75% of patients. Lamotrigin monotherapy is less effective, with nearly half of the patients becoming seizure-free. This view has been recently confirmed by Glauser et al., who performed a double-blind, randomized, controlled clinical trial to compare the efficacy, tolerability, and neuropsychological effects of ethosuamide, volproic acid, and lamotrigin in children with newly diagnosed childhood absence epilepsy. Drug dosages were incrementally increased until the child was free of seizures, the maximal allowable or highest tolerable dosage was reached or a criterion indicating treatment failure was met. The primary outcome was freedom from treatment failure after 16 weeks of therapy. The secondary outcome was attentional dysfunction. Differential drug effects were determined by means of pairwise comparisons. The 453 children who were randomly assigned to treatment with ethosuamide, lamotrigin, or volproic acid were similar with respect to their demographic characteristics. After 16 weeks of therapy, the freedom from failure rates for ethosuamide and volproic acid were similar and were higher than the rate for lamotrigin. There were no significant differences between the three drugs with regard to discontinuation because of adverse events. Attentional dysfunction was more common with volproic acid than with ethosuamide. If monotherapy fails or unacceptable adverse reactions appear, Replacement of one by another of the three anti-epileptic drugs is the alternative. Adding small doses of lamotrigin to sodium valproate may be the best combination in resistant cases. While lethosuamide is effective in treating only absence seizures, valproate is effective in treating multiple seizure types including tonic-clonic seizure, as such it may be a better choice if a patient is exhibiting both types of seizures. Clonazepam is effective in the short term but is not generally recommended for treatment of absence seizure because of the rapid development of tolerance and high frequency of side effects. Contraindicated drugs, carbamazepine, vigabatrin, and giagabine are contraindicated in the treatment of absence seizures, irrespective of cause and severity. This is based on clinical and experimental evidence. In particular, the GABA agonists vigabatrin and giagabine are used to induce, not to treat, absence seizures and absence status epilepticus. Similarly, phenytoin, phenobarbital, gabapentin, 
and pregabalin should not be used in the treatment of absent seizures. Data limitations In the treatment of absent seizures there is often insufficient evidence for which of the available medications has the best combination of safety and efficacy for a particular patient. Nor is it easily known how long a medication must be continued before an off-medication trial should be conducted to determine whether the patient has outgrown the absent seizures, as is often the case in children. To date there have been no published results of any large, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies comparing the efficacy and safety of these or any other medications for absent seizures. The studies that exist have been small and not produced clear conclusions. References External links, Video of Absent Seizure, Mechanisms of Absent Seizures, Thalamocortical Oscillations, Absence